Good morning, Cardinals fans. I hope your day started with a little extra pep in your step after a good guys winner over the Cubs. So let's talk about last night. Yes, things got a little dicey towards the end, but it wouldn't be Cubs Cardinals without a little extra drama, so it's fine. In the bottom of the first inning, Matt Carpenter tried to score on a base hit by Marcelo Zuna to left fielder Kyle Schwarber. Now Matt Carpenter tried to score from second. As a general rule, Matt Carpenter trying to score from second on anything other than a home run or a ground rule double is probably a bad idea. However, I have to say, I don't hate that Jose Akendo opted for an aggressive move there. I mean, first inning against the Cubs, three guys in a row had reached. Sometimes you have to try to force the opponent to make a perfect play, which Schwarber did, and Matt Carpenter may not be fast enough to be the guy you get aggressive with very often. But there's something to trying to be the team that lands the first punch, especially early. And when it appeared that Quintana didn't quite have it, I don't hate the choice. Now they didn't score in the inning, which was frustrating, but they did get a good look at Jose Quintana, and that look revealed that he was beatable. Case in point, the bottom of the second inning. After Dexter Fowler reached on an error by Javier Baez, apparently not everything he does is magical, Jed Jerko moved the line right along, and Quintana had a good chance to escape the jam again if he could get Paul DeYoung, which he did, and then Miles Michaelis, which he did. There was only one problem. He still had to get by Tommy Pham. Pham is fourth in the National League in batting average, he's second in on-base percentage, and he's ninth in OPS. But the most notable stat, perhaps, is this. Pham has yet to strike out with runners in scoring position this season. That's huge. In fact, on the year, he's batting 471 with men in scoring position, including eight hits with four walks in 21 plate appearances. He has three doubles and now a towering three-run homer. That three-run lead would be all the Cardinals would get. But no worries, the Cardinals have Miles Michaelis. That wasn't sarcasm, that was actually legit. I'll admit, I was not impressed by the Michaelis signing. I'll also admit that I didn't really have a great reason for that, except that I guess the lack of name recognition and the fact that his only real success had come in Japan, I had low expectations. Turns out, what Miles Michaelis learned to do in Japan was pitch. He's thrown 70% of his pitches this year for strikes, and he's walked just two batters all year. He utilizes the strike zone masterfully, locating all of his pitches up, down, inside, outside, on the corners with pinpoint accuracy. With Michaelis, it's not about overpowering hitters. It's about fooling them into thinking that they're about to make solid contact, which they're not. Batters make hard contact on 82% of the pitches that Michaelis throws. They make hard contact on just 34% of those pitches. And with the movement and the ever-changing recipe, as he called it, of pitches in sequence, batters seem genuinely surprised by what they get from Miles Michaelis. Now, some of that might be the newness. I mean, even video analysis doesn't always prepare you for a 78 mile an hour curveball on the inside corner, followed by a 98 at times mile an hour fastball up in the zone. But the point is, the Cardinals did their homework and Miles Michaelis is proving them right, pitch after pitch after pitch. He went seven strong innings again last night before turning things over to the bullpen, and we'll get to them in just a minute. But I wanna go back to Marcelo Zuna real quick. I was listening to the game on the radio as I drove home from work last night, and John Rooney from KMOX said something that really stuck out to me. He said that Marcel looked quieter in the batter's box than he had all season. Now, I wouldn't say Ozuna is a particularly restless hitter, but maybe that's just because we have Jose Martinez setting a pretty high bar in that category. But when I did get home and turn the game on for myself, I saw the same thing. There was a calm, a stillness, and three solid hits that followed. So don't be surprised if a quieter Marcelo Ozuna gets loud real soon. See what I did there? Okay, to the bullpen. I'll keep it quick. Tyler Lyons came in for his one guy, because sometimes that's a thing. Then Dominic Leone came in, presumably to get the next two 
in the seventh inning. Except that he never threw a pitch that mattered, at least to the game. While throwing his regular warm-up pitches, Leon grimaced, then awkwardly and gingerly just sort of hung his arm down by his side and promptly left the game. It looked bad. It looked like the kind of reaction he would have if he threw a pitch, heard a pop, and knew his season was done. Turns out his biceps are cramping? Because apparently that's a thing? His status is TBD, but the scenario required some tremendous help from Luke Gregerson, who's been a bit hit or miss himself this season. Good news is, last night, he did his job. And the Cardinals handed a 3-0 lead to Bud Norris, who promptly took a few years off the lives of every Cardinals fan everywhere. Norris gave up two runs in the ninth inning, but finally slammed the door, and the Cardinals picked up an all-important home win over Chicago. The drama! It just can't ever be easy, can it? You know what else isn't easy? Getting 3,000 Major League hits. Congrats, Albert. <laughs>